protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. Now today I am joined in studio with two pretty badass warriors right here. We've got U.S. Army Nate Self. We've got Joel Carpenter of the 75th Ranger Regiment. How are you guys doing today? Doing great. Doing great. Thanks, Joe. So let's talk about why you guys are here. You've got a book out, Two Wars. You help co-author it. Tell us a little bit about the book. Well, the book takes about 10 years of my life from the time I got to West Point as a cadet training to be an officer in the Army to um, a little bit after uh, the time I got out of the Army, about 10 years later. And uh, it includes a significant battle that happened early in the war in Afghanistan um, on top of a 10,000-foot mountain where we were going in to re rescue a Navy SEAL who had been uh, captured and uh, killed. And we didn't know that at the time, but that's the focal point of the book. But the last third of the book is is about coming home from war and, and reintegrating. And, and uh, that's the second war, if you will. And what was it like helping uh, write this book, telling his story? So I actually didn't help right hit the book but I adapted the screenplay so oh, that's we right, actually yeah, have yeah. a movie effort right now and then okay, yeah. I was the one that put the screenplay together based on Nate's book Two Wars so it was awesome I mean, it was like a historical lesson at the same time I'm a U.S. Army veteran so I know about the Battle of Takargar you know a lot of people do but for those out here who are going to watch this who don't know what it is give us a rundown about that you know like you said there was a Navy SEAL that went missing you guys were looking for him you didn't know at the time that he was dead and you led a QRF mission, which is a quick reaction force, to go out and uh, lead these guys. So tell us what happened there. Yeah, I was part of a Ranger unit there. Um, we got there in early uh, 2002, late 2001, early in 2002, and uh, assumed a mission as part of Task Force 11 to kill or capture Al-Qaeda's top leaders. And so the small task force included SEALs. And uh, it was late February, we started an operation in uh, southeastern Afghanistan um, known as Operation Anaconda. And uh, the intent of the mission was for a SEAL team to insert on top, uh, near the top of a mountain called Tucker Gar. And, uh, and there they would set up an observation post. Um, as they went in, uh, they came under fire and the helicopter pilots flew their helicopter away and, and a SEAL named Neil Roberts Part of SEAL, SEAL Team Six fell out of his helicopter and into enemy into into an enemy strong point. Um, he was fighting there alone as his helicopter flew away. Uh, his team went back there to try to get him about an hour later, uh, but my team was also called to come in and try to uh, reinforce the SEAL team or to find this missing SEAL. And uh, so we went in uh, just about daybreak on uh, March the fourth, two thousand and two. And uh, on the same mountaintop, right before my helicopter landed, we were shot down and uh, immediately in a, in a firefight all day. What's that got to be like? What's going through your mind? You know, you're already putting yourself out there. You're risking your life to go try and get this seal. And then you already got all these things going through your mind. You know, before you go to a mission, what's going to happen? Are my guys going to come back? Am I going to do the right thing? All this stuff goes through your mind. And then you get shot down. I mean, what's going through your mind at that point? I mean, that's that's got to be intense. Well, the preparation that you mentioned, Joe, is is um, you think think you think through scenarios a lot in your in your training and in your reading of military history and in your um, you know mental preparation and just discussions with the guys. Uh, you don't necessarily expect things to go that badly, um, but you're also not necessarily feeling a high degree of fear because you're with your team, you're highly trained and you're focused on what needs to be done. And so going in there, we had, we had spent a, a few months in Afghanistan up, up to that point with not much action. So we were pretty excited, but we knew that having a missing man from our force on the ground was, uh, was as significant a mission as we could have had. And so we were really focused and um, like I said, not expecting things to go badly once you find yourself shot down on uh, on this mountaintop uh, with with heavy gunfire coming inside the helicopter before we even got out, uh, you just it's quite a shock. So, how many of you were there there, and how many Taliban fighters, or so to say, do you believe that you guys are up against? Um, well, on board my helicopter, aside from the air crew, we had a, a, a team of ten Rangers on my helicopter, and another ten on the second helicopter that didn't get in at that time. 
So it was just our helicopter that hit the ground, and we had a, a three-man team from the Air Force that was a combat search and rescue team attached to us. Um, I don't know exactly how many enemy there were on top of the mountain. Um, probably a couple squads. Yeah. Um, don't want to overestimate what was there, um, but there was um, there were other enemy elements that were firing mortar rounds on us and sniping at us, and then and then later in the battle trying to attack the mountain after we had taken the mountain. So I don't know exactly how many in those waves came. And roughly how long do you think the whole mission lasted, so to say, the whole the battle? Well, we hit the ground. We were shot down just before sun up, and it was about 6.15 in the morning, local time, and we didn't leave the mountain until probably 8.30 at night. It's a long time. So it was, you know, it was, it was all day. Um, and we didn't extract until, you know, we had the, the cover of darkness and the, the advantages that we have at nighttime. So we've seen what's happened with Benghazi. You know, I, I've talked to Chris Peranto quite a few times, you know, run into him here and there. He's been on the show. You know, he got left there. You know, what are your thoughts on what happened with Benghazi, with Hillary Clinton? What do you... What do you think about that whole instance? You know, there's a lot of people who have mixed emotions, mixed feelings about it, but how are you as a vet, who's someone who's been there, who knows what it kind of feels like to be stranded over there and not know if anybody back here is even really even paying attention? Yeah, I, I think when you're on the ground and you're executing mission, whether you're a contractor supporting our government or you're actually in uniform uh, executing a mission, you somehow have a way of, of separating policy and decisions that are made at higher levels and you're just focused on getting the job done and, and getting everyone home alive. And um, having been in the, that kind of situation where very similarly on this mountaintop, we knew that we weren't going to get reinforcements. We kind of knew that it was just us for several hours and every decision we made could have meant the demise of all of us or it could have uh, prolonged that. Um, but, but it was really just us for a while. Um, that's a, that's a pretty heavy feeling. And, um, although, you know, you have the support of the whole country, there are certain situations where it's not there. And I was in a situation that for several hours because of our communication situation and, and where we were and a lack of communication on our part, because we were so overwhelmed for a matter of a couple of hours, we were literally alone. And, um, and that feeling is, uh, is one that, uh, like I said, it's pretty heavy, but when you know who's around you and you know what you've been through in training and you know what you're willing to do for each other, you don't believe that you're going to fail. Now, were you injured while you were over there? Uh, I took a little bit of shrapnel in my right leg. Um, we had several men die in this, this, uh, battle, um, several on board my helicopter, six of us, um, from our team gave their lives to bring Neil Roberts home. And he was the seventh casualty or the first casualty, if you want to look at it that way. But uh, several others wounded, including me. It's pretty intense. Anything you'd like to add, Joel, as well? No, I mean, I, you know, I've worked as a security contractor after my time with uh, Ranger Regiment. And, um, and I, <clears throat> I was actually in uh, Baghdad when Benghazi took place. And we were operating out of a, a hotel in the red zone. So I, I always, my worst fear was, you know, what, what could happen? I mean, we could have easily been overrun and, uh, I think everybody was aware of that, but just like Nate said, like you become focused on, on the mission at hand and you almost get lost in that. Uh, maybe it's a good thing. Um, but, uh, you, you're hoping for the best. And a lot of times, um, I don't even think in my mind, I, I ever thought that, uh, it was an option that, you know, death was an option, not because from an arrogant point of view, but it just seemed like, okay, we just have to do, you know, A, B, and C and get through this. So, uh, you know, I've, I never, in my time in regiment, I never experienced anything like Nate did with those other Rangers. A lot of those guys are my friends and I've been on hundreds of combat missions and, uh, and we just never had that. So it's amazing to me that you can be from the same unit. Nate and I were actually served in the same company, um, and at different times. And then you know, have such differences in what he went through and then what my experience in regiment 
was, you know, fairly positive. Every mission that we went on, it was like mission success, came back, zero incident. So, uh, you know, my empathy goes out to Nate and all of those guys that fought that day. Well, it truly is an amazing story. We look forward to uh, being able to see the show coming out, The War Fighters. Uh, tell us a little bit about that really quick, uh, where to see it, when it's coming out, and then uh, that'll be it. Yeah, so War Fighters is, uh, th that is a Film 45. That's Pete Berg's company that's putting that out. And there's two individuals. Uh, one of them is from, uh, he's a veteran also from Ranger Regiment 75th. His name is Mike Baumgarten. And then Ray Mendoza is a, is a SEAL. Those two uh, are the producers, along with Pete Berg on War Fighters. They put this out. Uh, one of their episodes is on the Battle of Takagar. And, uh, and we, you know, participated in that, that filming, Nate especially, uh, approximately eight months to a year ago. Um, so, you know, it's pretty much goes over the battle and, and gives a, a really good synopsis of what happened. So we're looking forward to that. The, the first episode is going to come out on uh, Veterans Day. And I think there's four episodes that will air that day. And then the Battle of Takagar episode is scheduled to be released uh, sometime in the new year. Awesome. Well, cool, man. Glad to have you guys on here. Thanks for sharing yeah. your story yeah. with us. You. We're going to go into the studio now with Alex Jones, where we're going to go in more in depth and talk about a lot of these issues as well. This has been Joe Biggs with InfoWars.com. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139.